Welcome everybody to another segment in our Women Lead Online Forums brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. I'm Patty Vargas, I'm your host today, and today we have a panel of subject matter experts, a panel of them. So we are in for a rare treat. And our session today lasts for about an hour. If you've joined with video, you'll be able to see our guests and our attendees alike. Questions and comments are always welcome, but if there is something that you'd like to contribute anonymously, just put it in the chat to me and then I would be happy to share it for you. And our topic today is why should I serve on a nonprofit board? And I'm really excited to introduce today's subject matter experts because they really know what they're talking about. So let me tell you a little bit about each of them. First of all, we have Jody Grenier. Jody is the CEO of Foundation for Women Warriors, where their mission is to serve women veterans and their children so that their next mission is clear and continues to impact the world. So Jody, give everybody a wave so they know who you are. Next, we have Sashi Whitman. Sashi is the executive director at Sue Rising, coaching young girls to build confidence, find their voice, and influence change. Sashi, give everybody a wave. Next, we have Wendy Forkus, who is the CEO of Community Catalyst of California, a not-for-profit 501c3 corporation, providing services and advocacy for people with disabilities and veterans. So wave your hand, Wendy. And then last but not least, we have Leah Watson. Leah is the founder of GRACE, which stands for Girls Rising Above Child Exploitation, where they provide a safe, faith-based home for girls aged 12 to 17 who have been rescued from child trafficking. So give everybody a wave, Leah, so they know who you are. So man, with a group like that, I mean, how I'm already inspired. So we could just end right here and, and go home happy and inspired. So, you know, first of all, I'm just gonna throw this out to, to our esteemed panel here. And what do you find the most rewarding about running a nonprofit organization? What's the most rewarding about that? I can go. Great. <laughs> uh, I think it's about serving a cause greater than yourself. It's really about serving a community of people who uh, may not even realize what is out there or what exists for them in terms of resources or possibilities. So I think that's what at least motivates me is to always affect change and to see how um, our organization can really, you know, help others and help girls. So that's awesome. That's great. I can go next. Yeah, great. So uh, at Foundation for Women Warriors, like Patty said, we serve women veterans and their children. Um, and we do this in a myriad of ways, financial uh, assistance, professional development and childcare assistance, and most recently critical items to reduce their costs. So for me, serving our community is, um, is born out of my own pain. Uh, I served in the Marine Corps and when I transitioned, I had faced a number of challenges. And um, one, it was uh, just coming home from war and uh, not having a transition plan, but then also uh, not being recognized as a veteran by my community because uh, stereotypically, it's designed or the narrative is around men. So for me, it's tangible results, being able to impact positively our women veteran community lives and their success and mitigate the challenges and stresses I, uh, I experienced for others. And so I think a lot of you know passion around the nonprofit sector is I identify with a problem they're trying to solve because I either experienced it or I am empathetic and I want to be a part of that. That's brilliant. For me, it's been great to be a voice. Um, I get to see both aspects of it. I get to um, help our youth get connected and with resources 
and then also spread awareness in the community and um, help prevent trafficking from happening to other youth. Um, because with all the public speaking engagements with the different community centers and churches and schools, um, we're able to do a lot of outreach to even help prevent child trafficking from happening. And that's really rewarding just from my own um, personal history of child exploitation and being able to help prevent that and awareness to it because I just didn't know what it was when I was younger. And just the awareness piece is so important with the community, but then also be able to reach out and then bring resources back to the youth that we working with has been just so rewarding. Yeah. That's great. That's awesome. Leah, if you can up your mic just a tad so we can hear you just a little bit more, um, that would be awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. How about you, Wendy? Last but not least. Yeah, no, that's okay. I, um, For me, it's all about knowing that I'm making positive impacts um, on people's lives and the communities um, in which, you know, not only I live in, but they live in as well. Um, so for me, that is why I have to work for a mission-driven organization. Um, I've actually taken so many tests and every single one tells me I need to be with a nonprofit mission-driven organization where I know I'm making positive impacts on people and their quality of life, so. That's great. Is that true for all of you guys? Do you all, did you sort of gravitate toward this, gravitate toward being involved with something that was mission-driven, something bigger than yourself? Is that kind of a common, a common thing? thing? Absolutely. Yeah, I would say for me, definitely. I, my degree is in psychology and I have a master's in behavioral analysis and therapy and actually was a, a video uh, film actually back dating myself that I watched when I was in one of my courses in college that really changed my life. And although I didn't assume or think or envision that I would become a CEO of a nonprofit organization, I knew I was going to have to work with people in uh, some way that I knew I could have some positive impacts, um, particularly for people that I know are not as fortunate or um, might need a little bit more support and advocacy in order to have the quality of life that many of us truly take for granted. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Great. I want to make sure that all of our folks attending, feel free to jump in, ask questions, make comments. You know, this is a, an open forum and um, really interested in hearing what you guys are all thinking about this as well. So, you know, I, I think that when we were promoting um, this particular segment, you know, I, I said something in the copy about, you know, that we hope people would want to join or be a part of a nonprofit board because they want to serve, you know, but that there are other aspects to that as well. So it, if you were, say interviewing somebody who says, hey, I want to serve on your board. What are some of the things you want to know about that person? Also, you want to go? <laughs> I, I, was, I was like, should I? <laughs> I, I know that's totally fine. Whatever, whatever you want. Um, I was just going to say how different, one. you know, from the last night's debate is this? Uh, for all of you women are just politely <laughs> sitting <I> back. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <now. laughs> it's really funny. Go ahead. Um, I, I would just, uh, I think I'm looking for their commitment level. First of all, that they're drawn to the mission, obviously, right? That they really have a have a at least for for and especially for our organization a um, a really deep concerning care for bringing up young girls and young women and what that looks like. I would like to understand their commitment level, what they're able to give. Um, I had read something recently about how board members need to be able to give in terms of time, treasure, or talent. And so that's what I would really like to understand from a prospective board member is in what area they're able to give. Is it all three? Is it a couple? And what that really looks like. Mm -hmm. so. Great. Yeah, I would definitely agree with all of that. Um, it really is the commitment. And um, also, you know, just because I've recently uh, had my strategic plan approved, there are also things that you're looking at the makeup of your board. And if you feel that you don't have certain things at the table that are going to assist you in moving forward with your strategic goals, um, you may also be looking for that in that and saying, hey, these are the types of needs I have or 
these are the areas that I'm really needing some support in and getting a feel from them if they feel they have expertise or um, would be excited about being part of that as well. Um, so just to add on to that, that might be other, you know, examples of things that you might be looking at when you're talking with somebody who's interested in being on the board. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. I think it's also important to ensure that, let's say, for instance, your um, recruiting or someone that is in marketing is interested in joining your organization. Not everyone that has a day job wants to bring their day job to the boardroom. Um, and so being clear about expectations of what their goals are for how they're going to serve on your board is really important because most people that are working, you know, however many hours a week in their industry look at board service as maybe a relief, something different I can do, or maybe I can use more, um, more of my financial acumen that I don't use in my day-to-day -day job. And so being clear on those expectations and not being, um, not being uh, deceived by someone's titles. Mm -hmm. uh, so really getting down to the nitty gritty of what would make this mutually beneficial for both our organization and to fulfill your, you know, your philanthropic needs. Yeah, great. Leah, how about you? Someone wants to be on your board. What, what are you looking for? Yeah, um, somebody who's aligned with the mission and the vision. It's so important that um, you don't have everybody that thinks alike, but at the same time, these are the people who are guiding your organization, the, the direction, the decisions that you're making. So it's important that they at least align with the mission, the vision, the vision and the values of the organization. Um, we pull a lot of our board members from our volunteers because if they're already dedicating their time to volunteering, they're going to have that drive to continue that service on the board. Um, somebody who's consistent is so important when it comes to the board membership. Mm -hmm. That's great. Kay, do you have your hand up? <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I am a, on the board of a nonprofit and I'm kind of struggling right now because I don't really know where to go. Um, my nonprofit is actually in Africa. And it, before it actually started as a nonprofit, it was, we were, we were doing the same thing, but we didn't have the designation of a nonprofit and now we do. And so I'm trying to figure out what my next step is. Um, I have talked to someone about grant writing because I thought maybe that might be a possibility. Um, I'm, I'm just really not sure. And I don't know if like everything else, it's gonna come to me one night and say, okay, this is what you have to do. Um, or if I need to be actively doing something else because obviously I have a safari company to run as well. So this is part of that. Um, and because it's in Africa, you know, my uh, recruiting of anybody would be would have to be someone who's actually familiar with um, the whole program, the Africa segment, you know, um, maybe not the grant writing part, but um, if I were to take on anybody else on the board, I think they would have to have some type of experience. So it would have to be somebody probably that went that understood what the what the nature of our business is and the nature of the program is. So do you have any advice for someone just getting started? <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about what, what the mission is and what your impact is? The mission right now, we have, there's, it's a children's orphanage, a children's home, and there's 28 disadvantaged youth there. And so the mission is, is to support the educational needs of those 28 children. So in Africa, primary school is free, but because the education system at the secondary level, which would be equivalent to our high school, it's not very good. Everybody tries to put their kids into a boarding school, which is a private school. And so that's the part that we support. If they get really good grades and that uh, during the high school, the government will pick up the cost of their college or university 
or we'll give them a loan until they are able to repay it. It does depend upon what college they go to. They have no choices after they get through high school. The government will pick out the school that they go to. They will look at what their career path is and they will pick out the school that best matches whatever that is. So, um, so our mission is to support the education through high school um, and then the government picks up after that because so far we've only had two that have graduated. We have just, I just got off the phone. We have um, six more, eight more that will graduate at the end of this year. So I'm trying to figure that out. I know some of them might get a loan. Some of them, some of them might not have to pay anything. Um, so that's kind of where I am. But basically it's to support the education of the, of the children and also to um, help facilitate the needs of the children, children's home because we do have some that are not at high school level and obviously we are supporting them as well. It's just not educational. So it's essentially, it's, um, is it scholarships and or loans for their secondary education? It's uh, for their, they call it something else, but it's, yes, it's for yes, their, their education. Yes, it's a scholar, like a scholarship. So it's $4,000, $1,000 a year. And we have, through the people that go on safari that I take on safari and people who know us, they have contributed towards sponsoring a child for four years to get through that, that, peer, that process. I think maybe your customers for your safari business might be um, those that are really intrigued. I think from my perspective, I can kind of see an aha moment in people when I talk to them about the work we do. And that's when you kind of, like that, that conversation grows in energy. And those are the folks that you want to kind of build your relationship with and potentially recruit to be on your board. I think also partnerships, partnering with other organizations um, that might have, uh, you know, this institutional knowledge of the area of Africa you're working in, and that might lead to uh, um, connections and more conversations and open up a door to a whole new, like, pipeline of talent. Okay. I'm um, part of Africa. Sorry to take up the whole conversation. I have friends that run NGOs in Africa, so I, I might be able to make a connection. What part Africa. of Africa? Tanzania. Okay. And there's plenty of NGOs in, in Tanzania um, <laughs> to go to. How about the rest of you? Anyone else have questions? thought about serving on, on a board. Go ahead, Amy. Yeah, I have a question um, because I have thought about being, you know, serving on a board, but I have no idea how to even approach an organization about that. So I'm kind of going like way basic, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, Amy, I would tell you, um, if you, if there's something that you're passionate about, um, just going online and um, going to the organization's websites, they usually have a board section. You can see who the current board members are. They may even have links on there that if you are interested in, you know, becoming a board member or to, to learn more about the organization, you could reach out to them. Um, I know here in San Diego, um, some organizations post on volunteer sites. Um, including the mpworks.org site. Um, so there, there are ways that you can go online. Um, there's also more like national big um, companies that you could also utilize, which like is, um, there's Bridgespan, um, LinkedIn has a whole section that you can um, look at and potentially see if people are seeking board members. Uh, and that could be for nonprofits as well as for profits. Um, where on LinkedIn that is? You know, I myself have not gone in and seen that. I don't know if anybody else has. I know like you can post through there, um, you know, positions and opportunities. I don't know if anybody's, are, are any of you ladies familiar with that section of LinkedIn? If you yeah, I can. 
Okay. If you follow non various nonprofit organizations, their pages might advertise, but also you there's a portion of LinkedIn where you can change your profile that uh, says looking to join a nonprofit board and that will put out the the bat signal to the nonprofit community that you're open to that. Mm -hmm. What was that, that one that you mentioned, Wendy? You said bridge, bridge something? Um, yeah, it's called Bridge Span. It's B-R-I-D-G-E-S-P-A-N. Um, there's also BoardNet USA that you might have the ability to um, find opportunities through. Um, the other I was just gonna mention as well, besides the mpworks.org, um, which is San Diego based, is um, the USD um, holds a nonprofit symposium, governance symposium in January every year. That is a phenomenal place. If you are really wanting to be part of a board, um, if you can attend even just one day, you would um, get to meet a variety of leaders in nonprofit. Um, but also many other individuals who are on nonprofit boards and the whole entire conference is to help um, you become a better board member. So that would be another opportunity um, and resource for you um, that you could, you know, even reach out to the um, USD Nonprofit Institute and they might also be able to help you. Mm -hmm. Super. That's a plethora of resources. So thank you, Wendy. <laughs> How about the, the rest of you? Any questions that you have or comments? Maybe you've served on a nonprofit before and, and maybe the experience was, was fabulous and maybe it wasn't so great. And you know, and you had some, some thoughts about that. Linda, I see your, your hand going My up. My hand tentatively. Uh, <laughs> I, I have, um, I, I guess a checkered past with nonprofits. Uh, I have I have a tendency when I join an organization that the next thing I know I'm on the board. Uh, you know I've I've been on boards as registration chairs, as finance chairs, as secretary, running the board, whatever it might be. Most of them though have not been um, service orient oriented. Uh, a lot of them have been like ASTD, which was the American Society for Training and Development, um, uh, East Bay Women's Network, that kind of thing. And so um, I, have a, I have a great deal of experience with boards, but all in sort of a narrow range. Um, I've been on um, more than, than I really care to admit. Uh, and what tends to happen is I get more and more of the work. So I would love to be on a board where I can play in my lane and I don't necessarily need to be the generalist who can do anything for anybody because they need it. And that's sort of where I'm coming from. Um, as I mentioned to um, Jody, um, I did retire from the army as a US major. So I, I really connect with the women veterans because of the challenge that we have coming out of the service. And even while we're in the service, some things which have uh, carried over to civilian life that are not necessarily being addressed. And it, it is a passion of mine. And yet um, I, haven't, I haven't found a group that uh, I resonate with per se. I do belong to the Women Veterans Alliance um, and there are things about it that I really like, but I'm possibly looking for another opportunity. Again, my, my challenge is I, you get me on your board and I'll do everything. Um, <laughs> you could Don't possibly me ask that, me. To, I'm sorry? <laughs> Don't tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, well, and, and uh, Pat, Patty knows because I joined um, an organization that she was part of the next thing I knew I was the treasurer and oh by the way can you do this and this and this and the answer usually is yes. Um, Toastmasters has had the same sort of um, growing. Um, you know I started out just being a demo speaker and now I'm the district finance officer and the secretary and opening a new club and it's like 
whoa, somewhere in there I need to do my own business would be nice. As my husband says, it'd be nice if you did your business now and then. But yes, I love being on nonprofit boards, as you can tell. Um, and it's just a question of can I play in my lane as opposed to, um, you know, doing sort of a Jill of all trades mm -hmm. throughout the organization. So throw that out as a, as a, a challenge with being on boards is you, be, you, get, you begin to love it so much that you want to do as much as you possibly can. And how do we, how do we scale that back so that you're doing what you really signed up for? I think one of the things, you know, that, that you point out there, Linda, is that, you know, there's, there's a lot of different kinds of boards, you know, there's um, nonprofits that are associated with a, with an association, you know, and then there are nonprofits that are um, service organizations, you know, all kinds of things like that. So I think finding your, like, like each of our panelists have mentioned, finding your passion and your ability to really serve in that, you know, is, is probably um, a differentiator, you know, with that. Leah, you look like you have something you want to say. You were leaning, leaning forward, so. No, I just switched my internet connections. I'm not sure if my audio is working properly. Yeah, I can, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I actually would add on, Patty, that um, I think it is probably the type of nonprofit board that you're on um, I, because there are some that are very structured and some that aren't. I will tell you a nonprofit organization such as mine, we have like we're almost um, like 18 uh, million budget. We're highly service driven. We have pretty set bylaws um, and within those bylaws, it, it says terms, it has you know, how you get to be on certain positions and those are voted on. Um, and so I, I do think it's probably the types of boards that you're on and the size of the organization that probably play into some of that. But I will also tell you that as a CEO, if we have a board member who is willing to assist us in, in helping us in meeting our goals and our, you know, and we reach out and you're always saying yes, you know, we would probably as a, a CEO not tell you no, because technically you're kind of our supervisor, right? Um, and so that's the other part is having um, that uh, understanding that in organizations like mine, um, I, I am hired and fired by the board. And so they technically are my supervisors. And so um, I will work very hard to ensure that I'm meeting that board member's um, needs in the sense of if they want to be engaged and they want to be um, active, I, I, my goal would be to find ways that they could do that. Um, and of course, put my ask out there. And if they say, yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna you know, grab it and say, let's go. Um, because you can have very active board members and then you can have board members that um, are those that are really active when they're there at the meeting, but after that, you don't hear from them until you reach out again. Um, but I, Patty, you were saying for her to find her passion. I, I think I've already found it. I think she has a passion for being a board member where she can have a lot of impact in helping. Um, yeah, and I think all four of us are probably thinking, hmm, I wonder how we can get Linda on our board. <laughs> It's definitely a conversation we can have. <laughs> Be careful what you wish for, Linda. I know. Yeah. <laughs> so those of you that are, that are leading your nonprofits, um, what can somebody expect from working on a nonprofit? Jody, what, what does somebody who serves on your nonprofit board, what can they expect? What is going to be expected of them and what can they expect to get out of it? I think that depends on the person and the initial relationship building and how they came to our organization um, and, and what their expectations are and level setting that at the very beginning. Uh, the standard thing is that they're going to have, you know, their duties uh, that are, you know, duty of care, loyalty, and, and um, you know, 
obedience. So that's, they're a fiduciary. They have to make sure that we're prudent about where we're using our, our resources and that uh, there's no conflicts of interest. So outside of that, we have monthly board meetings that are very catch up. Uh, it's an hour long. And then we have quarterly board meetings. And then we have a, an annual retreat uh, and strategic planning session. And so um, there's a minimum requirement there. There's also a minimum uh, give or get that we enforce, um, which we do it a little bit different. It's give, get, or in-kind service. So if someone is doing speaking engagements on behalf of our organization, sharing um, their story, that you know that's considered time, you know, punching the clock. So I, I think we have like a structure, but then it depends on what what the level of uh, commitment is for each individual person. Mm -hmm. I will also say my view on the board and, and board members, I, the board, yes, can hire or fire a CEO or ED, but board members individually are not the collective. So it's a relationship. They are peers. You work together to advance the mission. Mm -hmm. And so, um, really the, the relationship between the executive director, CEO, and each board member is really important because, um, and also really important the board chair and the CEO because it's, you're both driving teams to achieve the mission. Mm -hmm. And if you're out of sync, that's, anyway. So that's a really long winded answer of, it starts from day one uh, as to what someone's looking to get out of it. Mm -hmm. That's a great, great answer. Leo, what about you, someone who's serving on your board? Sure. Um, right now with our board, half of us are very involved in the day-to-day -day of the operations, um, and the other half are more strategic advisors. So we have the board members that show up once a month to the monthly board meeting, and then the yearly strategic planning session. And then we have the other board members that are at every fundraising event, every um, you know, field trip that we have for our youth, they're just more involved than others. Mm -hmm. And um, when I was younger, I served on a board of all uh, military spouses that we didn't have jobs. And so we were constantly serving all the time, um, but that was our job. And now having a professional board of executives who all have careers, they don't have as much time to dedicate to day-to-day, -day, but that's why we have hired staff as well. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. How about you, Sashi? What, what are you looking for? What does somebody who serves on, on the Sioux Rising Board What's the expectation and what can they expect to get out of it? Yeah, well, right now it's so interesting listen, listening to everybody because uh, we're just in the baby infancy stages. We just received our, our um, 501c3 status this year. So we are super scrappy. We are, we just have to, we just added an extra half hour to our board meetings, which I have to say, I'm not a big fan of meetings. And I'm like, yay, you know, more time on Zoom. Um, but I have to say there's so many different pieces that we're trying to get together. So I think at this point, what I'm looking for is definitely expertise in certain areas, legal, marketing, events. I would love to um, bring other board members who have those pieces of expertise. Um, I do find that I'm running around with multiple different hats, depending on where I'm at, because I'm both, I'm both ED and I'm like, head of the board, I'm hoping to, you know, delegate that task on later to someone else. So it's really a matter of just uh, the, the planning phases and getting, and making sure that we're um, taking the right steps so that we're in support of, our, of our, our young girls, our students, their parents, the school board, the system. Uh, so there's just a lot of, I would say, ideation going on at this point. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. You know, so that's where a lot of our time is spent, which is laborious, but I know it's all leading to good things. So. Yeah. Well, I thought that was interesting to have, have you be a part of this as brand new, having mm -hmm. just gone through the process, getting the designation. And, and I have to say, you did it amazingly quickly, you know, yeah. so, uh, <laughs> yeah. so that was pretty amazing, you know, and then to, to have some of our other um, members here who have a lot of experience in this space, you know, is a, mm -hmm. it's a nice, a nice, uh, this fan here. Right. Yeah, for sure. Wendy, how about you? 
what what are the expectations and what can people expect? Um, well, we have a, a board uh, responsibility description and basically very similar to what the other ladies have explained. Um, we don't have as many board meetings, I'm realizing. Um, thankfully, I'm with you, Sashi, mm, meetings. Um, but we have quarterly meetings, well, well, basically every other month, and they're two hours. Um, right now, they're Zoom, obviously. Um, and then we also, um, I, I don't know that we do a strategic planning every year. Um, this is my first year with this organization and this board, um, and we did do a new strategic plan, but it was kind of done differently. It wasn't a strategic planning session, which um, Jody talked about, which is, I've seen that, and I worked for an organization that board did that. So and then we only have currently two committees, um, which is the audit committee and the finance committee committee. So that one, though, for us, it's kind of limited, but I've actually am looking to expand on that because of my strategic plan. Um, and we uh, uniquely, I would say as a nonprofit, currently do not do fundraising, which for me is a seller um, when I'm talking to potential board members, because that tends to be one of the reasons some people are not interested in serving on nonprofit boards because of the fundraising aspect. Um, and I actually um, have worked on a, a, with an organization that had a board similar to what Jody indicated where there were levels, like they didn't always demand uh, that you do some type of financial contribution. It could be a variety of things that you did um, to help contribute to that. But this board um, currently, um, that isn't an expectation. So it truly is just board meetings. And if they want to serve on one of those two committees, um, and then sometimes there's uh, special board meetings depending upon certain things that are going on within uh, the organization that might need to be handled in between board meetings. Mm -hmm. um, but I do preface that, that um, with the new strategic plan, I have plans and there might be some other uh, committees that um, board members will be invited to participate in um, throughout the year. Great. And it's funny, as you started talking about that, um, there was uh, a question that came in. Um, Lisa submitted a question because her internet is struggling a little bit here today. So Wendy, just as you were talking about fundraising, her question was, what's the bigger impact as a board member being a thought leader or a fundraiser? And you said you don't do any fundraising. So it sounds like the impact somebody brings to your board is in that space of being a thought leader or, or driven by passion, is that right? Yes, I would say for us, it would be that thought leader um, and strategic, you know, that's definitely something I look to my board to assist me with is strategic uh, thinking and planning. Yeah, great. And Jody, I want to go to something you put in the chat. You said it's important to know the life cycle of the organization and whether you are joining a working board. So what What's the definition of a working board? What's the, the difference there? A, a working board, it, typically you'll have working boards for startup nonprofits. This means that your uh, board, there's no staff, um, or if there's staff, it's typically minimal. So that means the board will be picking up duties that a team or staff would take on. For instance, drafting up content for the website or e-blasts and so forth. Um, and that is one way to get started with very little overhead, um, but also, you know, everyone is at a different life cycle. For instance, United Way is definitely not going to have someone, um, one, uh, one of their board members create a personal fundraising page during their campaign mm -hmm. um, or uh, overlook legal documents. They, they have a lawyer on team. But your, your startup and, and even your infancy and toddler type uh, nonprofits are going to need a little bit more elbow grease from their board members to get the ball rolling. Mm -hmm. And so I would say I inherited, I started with our organization in 2016. We've been around for 100 years. Um, I inherited a board that was not necessarily a working board 
and then we rebranded and kind of started our life cycle over. So I, um, it, you know, this this allowed me to bring some people on that could help us work a little bit, but it's still the day to day relies on the staff. So it's important to ask those questions. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you might end up um, in, in a in a position where you're giving more than than you signed up for, which mm -hmm. can happen very easily. Yeah. Good. Yeah, that's that's a good explanation. What about um, fiduciary responsibilities? Do all board members have the fiduciary responsibilities or um, even beyond responsibilities, um, accountabilities, I guess. <laughs> sure. You yeah. are legally accountable to uh, the IRS. So any, if, if someone commits fraud, if there's a conflict of interest or self-dealing, now there's insurance um, uh, for those types of things, but being on a nonprofit board means you bear the burden of all the legalities mm -hmm. of what goes on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the, the insurance, that's actually, if you are going to join a board, um, that is definitely one of the board's responsibilities is the fiduciary. It's one of the um, reasons why nonprofits um, also boards have to be involved in CFO and CEO salaries and reviewing um, and auditing financial documents um, for that. But the insurance is called directors and offices, officers liability insurance. And so if you are joining a board, that is something you should ask. You should be asking, do you have that? Mm -hmm. um, because that is to help protect you as well as the organization. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, I was involved on a board once where um, we unfortunately had to do an audit of, uh, as part of the board, we were responsible for a very huge pool of money, you know, that was used for a specific thing. And we had to do an audit, which uncovered some questionable things. Uh, it was launched by the board, which was probably good for us in that, but it was a very stressful, um, emotional time, because we were all very passion driven about this particular board and then to, to find some, I mean, it, it was great. In the end, it was, it was uh, made better than it ever was before. But boy, that was something I would not want to go through again. It's very emotional. Was it an IRS audit or an audit by a third party? It was a third party. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And one that we initiated, we yeah. asked for. Yeah. No, thank goodness, not an IRS audit. <laughs> yeah. Well, typically IRS audits, depending on um, what kind of funding you're seeking and your size, the, like if you make anything a million or over, they are required mm -hmm. um, by the IRS. Uh, so audits don't have to be uh, don't have to be a bad thing. They're, they actually are a safeguard for the, for the board and for organizations to say, hey, like we are on the up and up and mm -hmm. um, you can trust us yeah. because we're investing in someone to make sure we can check that box. Right, any other questions from our, our esteemed guests or our panelists? Any comments that you would like to make? I want to make sure we have so many people in the little boxes. I want to make sure I don't miss anybody who might have their hand up or be looking to ask a question. So what I want to do, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I, I just, you know, I, I popped in because I'm relatively new to Connected Women of Influence. You know, now it doesn't feel as new, but I just like to see who's doing what. And I've never been on a, a board, um, you know, non-for-profit or any of that. And, and honestly, I've always you know, had the like calling, like where I want to do that. But, you know, early on it was, oh, the career, the four kids, the commute, like, where am I going to really earmark that time? Can I make sense of it from a business perspective? So that when it does take some energy and, and time away from work that the boss blesses it because it's connected to that. Right. Or is it going to be driven by something that I am personally 
passionate about. And so I popped in just to see who the members are that are doing things like that and why it was driving your decision. So I, you know, this was informative. It was helpful. It was enlightening. And so, you know, thanks for everything that you were telling me about because um, I enjoyed it and it kind of incited that. So I have to figure out where it is I want to go, you know, yeah. um, because like, like many of you had said, you know, if you do it, you, you do it like, and you want to get an A plus, like you're in, you know what I mean? So it, it has to be something that, uh, that, you know, I feel, um, thanks. So I'm just going to silently listen and see what, what else. So I, I'd like to give the four of you, um, a, a chance to say, you know, one last thing about, about your organization, what you love about it, what you're passionate about it, um, and why somebody would want to get involved with your organization and serve on, on the board. So Leah, I'm gonna go to you first because I haven't heard enough from you. So yeah. let's hear it, baby. <laughs> I'm so sorry about my internet connection. I just moved, but um, yeah, uh, serving on our board, we are a little bit of a working board still. For the first two years, we didn't have any paid staff. So our board was a hard working board. And now, like I said, about half of our board is still um, very actively working, while the other half is more of a strategic advisor role. And we're open to both positions. We definitely need a treasurer right now. Um, we are outsourcing a lot of our accounting and audits and taxes and things like that, but it would be great to have a treasurer on our board. Um, it, yeah, just making that huge impact in these young girls' lives. We actually work with ages 12 to 21 now because we realize that a lot of girls 17 to 21 are still really struggling uh, to get out of that life and need that transitional help as well. Um, and you just know that you are making an impact. You actually get to meet a lot of our youth. And because you're on the board, you're in the everyday discussions, and you get to just be a part of that, the steps that we take to um, help them choose a new path in life and get on their feet and get them the therapeutic needs and resources that they so desperately need to uh, have an opportunity like this. That's great, Leah, thank you. Sashi, how about you? Yeah, I think for us, um, what we're looking for, again, in terms of board membership is just a specific need in terms of like legal events and marketing. Um, I think what I'm always looking for in terms of somebody who either volunteers with us or serves in our board, whatever capacity that's in, I'm always welcome to that. And I'm looking for someone who um, is really all about uh, supporting young girls. We, we're looking at, to be more specific, we're looking at middle and high school for right now, and in, in the areas of communication and confidence. Mm -hmm. And so... If there's anyone out there who has expertise in those specific areas in terms of it could be everything from mitigating bullying to um, how to present yourself in an interview, uh, you know, those type of different types of things. And of course, we're all, um, looking for future coaches and, and mentors in our speaking competitions as well. Um, so that's always a, a definite desire and need there. And as soon as we're out of, well, out of our current uh, restrictions that we're under uh, that I'm hoping to really be able to expand and grow. So we're a little bit limited right now, but looking forward to um, hopefully later next year to be able to really grow and expand. So great. Wendy, let's hear from you. Yeah, um, so I am looking to grow the board. I'm really excited. We just had two new board members voted on at our last meeting last week. Woohoo! Um, so we're now up to the big seven. Um, unfortunately, when I came on, there was a, a lot of individuals that decided to, um, that they needed to leave um, for various reasons. They all assured me it had nothing to do with me. But um, so I'm trying to, at a minimum, get two more members. But ideally, I would like to, I'd like the board to be between nine and 11. Um, and for me, I'm looking for um, really people, again, who are very strategic, who want to support um, and, and assist me in giving guidance and support in moving our initiatives. And our initiatives are going to be in the areas of technology, uh, obviously a lot driven by COVID, particularly for the services we provide. All our services were face-to-face, -face, and now we're having to figure out how to do those all virtually. And I think we'll continue to be able to do those virtually going forward, even when we are able to go back to doing more of the face-to-face -face services with the people we serve. 
Um, the other is um, we are, we've just redone, and I haven't even announced it to my organization, but as a whole, but we have a new mission, uh, vision, and values. So we're gonna be needing to brand and have a plan um, to roll all of that out in the coming years. So I'm looking for people who um, would be really interested in being involved in um, helping do that with the organization. And then as an organization, we continue to look at opportunities to grow and expand, whether that's through strategic partnerships or mergers. And so we're also um, looking for members who would assist us in helping us through those um, opportunities when they come up, whether that's just helping us assess whether it's a good uh, opportunity for us to pursue or even you know, getting through that and helping us go through a, a complete merger if uh, we have that opportunity. That's great, thank you. Mm -hmm. And Jody, how about you? So I would say first, what would draw someone to want to serve on our uh, board is, like I said, we've been around for 100 years and women have served dating as far back as the Revolutionary War and before they even had the opportunity to vote. And so this is a unique opportunity to really impact the lives of women who were trailblazers and have fought the good fight for all women. Um, and had really opened up other jobs and opportunities uh, as, as examples of success. And so the fact that we have women veterans struggling because of being underserved and overshadowed by their male counterparts, I think that the impact can be very tangible. In terms of what we're looking for, we have uh, a board of eight and they're spread out all throughout the country. I have a board member in New York City we have a couple in LA, uh, and then we have a few in Orange County, and then we only have one in San Diego. So we're looking for more San Diego representation, though uh, we've always operated in hybrid, so Zoom makes that that much easier. Um, I'm looking to add uh, anywhere between three to five. Uh, we wanna keep it uneven for voting purposes, but um, we're looking more towards, uh, you know, whether whether someone has connections to corporate America. Um, we're we're growing as a board, so having more corporation representation, um, and then of course uh, locally in San Diego, and then we always welcome lived experience. Um, but more, most importantly, is being very passionate about the mission because there's nothing. There's nobody wants to work with a team, paid or unpaid, that is not living, breathing, and loving the mission that you're trying to advance. Mm -hmm. Well, I have to say, you guys have literally made my day. I, I think this will be the best part of my day today. So I want to thank all of you for, for being so generous with your time, taking the time to come and and speak to us today like this, take our questions, um, share your insights. And so many of us didn't even know what it meant to serve on a board or, or what it entailed or why we would wanna do that. So I really am grateful for you spending the time and just you know really being so open and transparent with it. And I thank all of you who joined us today um, and for those who are going to be listening to the replay of this as well. Um, any, if you want to get in touch with any of these women, um, I'm sure that they would love to hear from you. We've got Jody Grenier Foundation for Women Warriors. Oh my gosh, I'm going to have to try to get through, through this. Leah Watson uh, representing Grace. Uh, Wendy Forkus, California. Help me, Wendy. California. Community Catalyst of California. Thank you. A long one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Sashi Whitman of Sue Rising. So again, thank you guys so much for spending your time with us. And I wish all of you uh, best luck in finding your passion, finding your mission, and then going out there and just serving it. So thank you again. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you. 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 Thank